Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Triangulation is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Triangulation, episode 61, recorded July 18th, 2012. Raspberry Pi. Triangulation is brought to you by Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it right from your desk. For our special offer, visit Stamps.com, click the radio microphone, and use the promo code TRIANGULATION. And by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, visit audiblepodcast.com slash triangulation. It's time for Triangulation, the show where we get really interesting people, really smart people, and we sit down and we talk to them and we do it in a leisurely fashion, a conversational way, and it's always kind of my highlight of the week because I look forward to this so much. And we're very excited to have uh, our guest on today. Uh, Eben Upton is here. He is a founder and a trustee of something that has been getting a lot of attention lately, <laughs> Raspberry Pi. Eben, welcome from the UK. Welcome. Hi there. Nice to talk to you. You're in London right now? Uh, I'm in Cambridge. Cambridge. So I'm, not, uh, I'm slightly north of Cambridge, so I'm slightly north of somewhere slightly north of London. <laughs> and according, according to uh, the Raspberry Pi website, you work. your day job is for Broadcom. Yeah, so I work for a, I work for a giant American um, semiconductor company, uh, Fortune and, 500 semiconductor. And yeah, that's des- my day job. You design ASICs for them, that kind of thing, or? Yeah, I do. I um, I design uh, mobile phone graphics chips. Oh, how interesting! Including the one in the Raspberry Pi, in fact. Ah, well, let's talk about it. So, uh, just for those who don't know, Raspberry Pi is a twenty five dollar computer, uh, and is and and it runs Linux. And it has RCA video in. It has out or out, I should say. Is it out or in? Out. Out. No, they're all out. They're all, they're out. all out. Audio out. USB, mm-hmm. Ethernet. It's got an HDMI port, 256 megs of RAM, a CPU, a GPU, Broadcom, an SD mm-hmm. card slot, $25. And uh, it is, you can't keep them in stock. Yeah, that's that's. If we've got a problem, it's that we can't keep them in stock. So <laughs> the one we, the one, you, the one you describe is. I uh, should be fair. The one we, you describe is a thirty-five dollar one. It's the deluxe model. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the twenty-five dollar, <laughs> the twenty-five dollar one lacks the network. Ah, okay. So, so if you need a land, it's ten bucks more. Yeah. So uh, tell us the story of Raspberry Pi. How did this come about? A group of us. Uh, who were teaching. So this is kind of a University of Cambridge spin out, right? So a, a group of us who were involved in um, uh, in recruiting uh, school kids, recruiting undergraduates to come and uh, uh, to come and study computer science in about 2005, noticed that all of a sudden we had no people applying to read computer science. That in 10 years, we'd gone from having six times as many people as we needed uh, and where all of, all of those people, even the ones we turned down, were amazingly well informed about computers, you know, knew how to program. They had their their Commodore sixty fours and their Amigas, and they they had uh, they knew how to program them in assembly language. And we'd gone from that down to a situation where we maybe only had two or three times as many as we needed, and that's actually kind of by Cambridge standards pretty bad. Um, and uh, the vast majority of them had maybe done a little bit of web programming, and we kind of looked around for reasons why this might have happened. The idea we came on was that uh, you know there weren't any Commodore sixty fours anymore, right? Interesting. Um, so this, Interesting. Is, this is really supposed to provide kids with that kind of turn it on, goes beep, start programming experience that we had back in the 1980s. So you think kids today are, uh, it's just too easy. They don't have to do anything. Everything's been written for them. It's an apply, the, yeah. the technology has become appliances. Yeah, absolutely. And um, the the kind of computer as appliance thing is a really yeah, it's kind of terrible. I I, I it is a, it's a good sign on some level because it means that computers have, as you say, got kind of easier to use. Uh, but it does mean that uh, it's starving academia and it's starving industry of the people who we need to make the next generation of cool appliance stuff. Right. So you, you need to have a balance between appliance and uh, general purpose computing. So what? What what were the design specifications? What were you, what did you aim for? Was it cheap? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so let's say four things. 
um we we wanted to be um we wanted to be interesting so uh, we didn't just want to be a machine for for programming we wanted to be able to do other interesting stuff so we can play blu-ray quality video right we can play 1080p blu-ray quality video onto your 46 inch plasma television wow uh, we have more 3d performance than a nintendo wii uh so we we kind of have these things that are interesting that kind of hooks to get kids to pull kids into the platform so that was one thing we wanted to be programmable, so we wanted to be able to bundle this device with every programming tool you've ever heard of, whether those are things for little kids, uh, like Logo, um, intermediate people like maybe MIT Scratch, uh, or real professional languages like Python and C. So we wanted to have that. Um, we wanted to be robust, so we wanted you to be able to push this into a school bag every day for five years and pull it out, and, and, and it would be robust enough that it would survive that. Um, and finally, we wanted it to be cheap. And I mean, I guess that to some extent, cheapness has driven the entire has driven the entire program. So you know, we had this idea: twenty five bucks. The original device we were thinking about was the one without the network. And we've only added a network because everyone told us that they would. The first thing they'd do with the twenty five dollar one would be to stick a network adapter on it, and that would cost them <laughs> more than ten bucks. So we were like, well, we can add this. We can give you this for ten bucks if you all, if ninety percent of you want it. We'll do the twenty five dollar version, but we will have the um, uh, uh, we'll have this this this. We'll bundle you a network adapter for, for 10 bucks. So um, we had this idea of 25 bucks, and that was supposed to be the cost of a school textbook, which kind of shows how badly informed we are, really. I guess, <laughs> yeah, about. they're about 10 <laughs> times more, but okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I mean, that, would, that, would, that wouldn't have been such an exciting challenge, I guess. Yeah, so, no. <laughs> um, it's good that we're poorly informed, otherwise you, we would never... You could buy an Nexus 7 tablet for the cost of a school textbook. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. If we'd, known, if we'd known people were prepared to pay that, we would have sold the, the existing Raspberry Pi for 250 bucks. Was it difficult to do it at uh, 25 and then $35? Was that hard to do? Incredibly, incredibly hard. Um, uh, I mean, it's taken us about six years from concept wow. to, to from concept to production, um, and we've tried a lot of different prototypes, kind of hunting for that mix those four of those four things. And we've had a lot of things that satisfy two or three of those four, but it was only really in the last year that we've come up with something that satisfies all four. So yeah, it was extremely difficult. Um, I have I have my own. Uh, one of our trustees were a UK charity. Um, and one of my trustees is a real kind of Steve Wozniak kind of guy, and he really kind of just beavered away at this for the last couple of years, getting the final version down to cost and up to performance. Is that Paul Beach or? Aha! So Paul Be Paul Beach, he beavered away. He produced our he produced our logo. Ah. So so Paul Beach is our um uh yeah Paul Beach is is responsible for the fact that we have some of I think for a for a for a, an amateur project. Uh, we have some of the best graphic design, some of the best um, identity um, a, a, of any project that I'm aware of. And, he, and even the name Raspberry Pi is is part of the <laughs> success, right? There are other there are other computers named after fruit, but nobody after raspberries. Yeah, so well, I mean, that's to some extent the fact they are running out of fruit, right? Um, we, we, we could, you know, durian, durian sandwich or something. But, you know, durian, durians don't smell so good. So, uh, um, you know, we ended up being ras raspberry because it's one of the few ones that's left, and Pi because we were going to run Python. That was the idea originally. Oh, that's we interesting. Gonna... So it's, yeah. it was PY, not PI. Well, that's that's the thing. You see, we thought the PI, we thought the Pi symbol would give us a really nice, some really nice graphic design possibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, we ran a the way we got our logo was we ran a contest that Paul won, um, and what we what we saw was ah, here we go uh, that everybody who submitted that's actually a buckyball. That's a C six. Oh uh, my God, it is. Oh, how interesting. The buckyball has thirty two uh, thirty two vertices, I think. So the thirty two vertices are for thirty two bit. Um, the you can see eleven of those vertices here, and those are the arm. Those are the eleven in ARM eleven, which is the processor wow. we have. So the whole thing, he sent us this whole pack of of information about about the about the meaning buried in the design. He really thought so about the, it. Wow! All the people who used that Greek letter, all the people who used the pi, um, they ended up uh, they, they looked very forced. Right. We didn't get a single entry that we felt we could accept that had a pi symbol. In it. So it was a waste of time in the end. We might as well have been Raspberry Pi, uh, particularly because a lot. Of, a lot of people, a lot of people have trouble calling it Raspberry Pi, right? People are very resistant to calling it Raspberry Pi. People call it Raspberry Pi, like Magnum no. Pi. You know, I, I, I don't know. It's look, it's right there. It's a joke. <laughs> pi. You know, it's yes. It's, it's even capital P, lowercase i. It's yeah. not capital P, capital I. And there's no full stops between them, and there's no guy with them stamp. So, you know, it's it's kind of it should be obvious, but it seems not to be. It strikes me that some of the uh, some of the inventions that made this possible was well the the 
predominance of mobile devices, particularly phones, you're in many ways taking advantage of all the development that's gone into mobile parts like the ARM chip, uh, Broadcom itself. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's no way a little organization like ours could have afforded to, uh, to tape out a chip. You know, I have a reasonable idea what it costs to tape out a chip. And, you know, we weren't going to be doing that. Right. So, so we were very lucky, A, that there was a device, A, that there was the whole concept of small ARM-based mobile chips, B, that there was a particular device, and C, that Broadcom's been very supportive. You know, they've allowed us to do this. This is not a run-of-the-mill activity for Broadcom. So, you know, we've, we've been very lucky in a lot of ways. That's neat. So they did help you out. Yeah, you know, they've been very supportive. Simply allowing us to do it, right, is a, uh, uh, is, is a, I'm just grateful we were allowed to do it. What do you mean allowed to do it? Should could anybody just buy parts and build something? Or? Well, that, that, that's the interesting thing is that typically parts like this don't tend to be available. We, we started off, when we, when we were first doing this, we thought we were going to make a thousand of these, right? You typically can't buy mobile phone chips in thousand off. Right. You know, it's not, it's not that they tend to be expensive in thousand off. It's, it's that they often tend to be unavailable in thousand right, off. Right. Um, so that's when I say allowed us to do it. What I mean is, you know, we're prepared to sell them to us in right. by my phone company standard small quantities. Right. So it's a Broadcom system on a chip, mm -hmm. ARM eleven, floating yep. point, seven hundred megahertz. Hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, although I, we know a lot of people are overclocking these, right? It's got some overclocking headrooms. So, awesome. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of people running gigahertz Raspberry Pis out there. Wow. Uh, you've got uh, – tell me about the GPU. It says Video Core 4. Mm -hmm. This is your bailiwick, isn't it? Yeah, so this is, this is, this is, ab this is absolutely this – this is my baby. This is uh, particularly the 3D Core in there. I was on the design team for the for the 3D core. And uh, it's an amazingly powerful. This is a chip that came out in 2000. The first incarnation is came out in 2009. It's only really in the last six months, I think, that we've seen um, calls from other vendors which have come anywhere close to it. Amazing. Um, so it's an, it's an enormously powerful device. Uh, and, and it's one that I, because I know, I know it very intimately, I'm quite good at getting a lot of performance out of it. Yeah. I know it's cool. Yeah. Runs OpenGL, runs OpenVG. <laughs> Yeah, that's it's and it's, and as you said, it'll play back a Blu-ray <laughs> disc at full <laughs> resolution, forty megabits yeah. a second. Yeah, it's uh, you know it does the whole whatever it is, sixty-two point five megabits. Was it uh, four, level four point one? Wow. H two six four. So I used to be before I was a three D geek. I was a video geek, um, but yeah, I think it's, it plays level four point one. Um, so it's quite it's quite something for the for the kind of money that you're that you're paying for this. Uh, and and we're, you know we're not done yet in terms of turning on the multimedia. Uh, features so we've just announced that we're producing a camera module a five megapixel camera module um there's an optional feature that we hope to add, um provide for between 20 and 25 dollars uh, and that let you record blu-ray quality uh h264 oh, videos so i'll let you record 1080p 30 video there is a tradition isn't there in great britain i'm, I'm thinking of the acorn the bbc micro there's a tradition of these kind of small kit computers that that people yeah. kind of sink their teeth into and become computer scientists as a result of Maybe more so yeah, here in the U.S. Absolutely. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess you know we've got our um, we got our ZX Spectrum, which obviously you guys had as the Timex, right? Uh, you know, we had we both had the Commodore sixty four. I guess maybe you had the TRS eighty, where we had the right. uh, the BBC Micro. So, so I guess uh, you see it on both sides of the Atlantic, and you see it. Um, the, the Sinclair is the fascinating one, of course, because that was widely because it's such a simple device. Right, it was what. Widely cloned in Eastern Europe. I've interviewed guys who got their start in computing on cloned, um, well, stolen um, um, <laughs> uh, Sinclair, Sinclair clones, illegal Sinclair clones in wow. Romania, uh, you know, using East German DRAM chips and stuff. So, so you, you've got all over, you have this kind of through the 1980s and into the early 1990s, you, you have this culture that then just gradually games consoles and the PC just kind of eat it away and, and, and the culture evaporates. And that's really what we're trying to get back to. Now, people aren't building these themselves. They get it fully assembled. Yeah, and so that's and that's kind of on some level, that's unfortunate, you know, to hit the that, to get, we did have prototypes when I said we had prototypes that hit some of our four goals. We had a prototype that I built um, uh, back in 2006, which you could build yourself on Veriboard. So this used Atmel microcontrollers. It used the same microcontrollers you find on an Arduino. Um, and it was it was kind of actually, in terms of performance, a little bit like an 8-bit machine from the from the 1980s. And you could build it yourself in an afternoon, and it did cost 25 bucks. 
Um, but it failed that interest. It failed that interesting. It failed the bundling with lots of tools test because it was a very specialist custom platform that only ran one or two languages. And it failed the interesting to kids test because all you could do with it was program. Ah. Um, so, so, so yeah, it's kind of unfortunate you can't build it yourself. Um, there are a lot of people producing add-on kits for doing physical computing, for doing you know control. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, these people are. Um, uh, you know, those things generally you can build them yourself. So people, if people want to get the soldering iron out, they do at least have somewhere to do that. So when it comes, it doesn't have uh, any software, there's no BIOS, I have to put an SD card in there to boot. Hmm. You have to. So you have to either come to our both of our distributors. So in the US, these are distributed through um, uh, two companies, uh, Newark and Allied. Um, and they, they both have big online presences. They're big online electronic catalog distributors, uh, and they both, in fact, sell will sell you an SD card with a with a pre-installed ah. uh, operating system on it. Ah. Alternatively, you know, as an addition on top of the on top of the you know, thirty for twenty five thirty five dollars. Uh, if you have, as most of us do, SD cards lying around your house, then you can come to our website and you can download for free an operating system image, use a PC to burn that onto the SD card, and then yeah, you have, then you're you're away to the races. That's just a Linux install on the. Uh, on the SD card, and it's Debian. Is that the what you're using, or? Yeah, we're using Debian. In fact, we have this thing we call Raspbian, which is a <laughs> uh, which has been done by some guys out in uh, out in your neck of the woods. Um, uh, which is a it's a custom build of uh, Debian Wheezy um, for um, uh, which which takes advantage of the floating point features um, on the uh, on the Pi. Um, the stat the stock. Distribution of uh, of Debian for ARM doesn't um, for ARM six doesn't take advantage of uh, of the floating point unit, so we get quite a big performance hike from that. The downside is we have to do our own build, or this Raspbian organization has to do an entire rebuild of the thirty thousand packages in the in the Debian database for us. Holy cow! Recompile the whole yeah. thing. These are some dedicated guys. So yeah, um, uh, yeah, Mike, a guy called uh, started by a guy called Mike Thompson out in California, um, and yeah, absolutely. Uh, Absolutely incredible piece of work, and you know he was he was working on this because Raspberry Pis have been kind of rare until recently. Um, he um, uh, yeah he was working on this for a month or two before he even got his his first Raspberry Pi. So he's very very, very dedicated. He was cross compiling to the uh... yeah he, he had some I think uh, IMX fifty three boards, um, and he was just uh, th- those were ARMv seven boards, and he was just cross compiling for the ARMv six oh, process oh Raspberry my. Pi. <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Somebody wants to know if that's an Elder Scrolls map behind you, even. Uh, it is, um, yeah. We've got, uh, yeah, we've got Baldur's Gate two, and <laughs> behind it we've got uh, something else. It's my wife, um, <laughs> my wife and, and partner in crime on Raspberry Pi, Liz. Uh, so she's been responsible for. She's she's actually our, our only full time person, our only full time volunteer, and she's she does all of our social media in between uh, playing this sort of thing. So, oh, that's uh, neat. Oh, that's really neat. Yeah. The family that plays together. We're talking to Eben Upton. He oh, is. Yeah, well, she's on her- <laughs> oh, you don't play? She only she I don't plays? Play. She, plays on, she plays on her own. I'm, I'm busy building Raspberry Pi. So. <laughs> I've got work to do. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking to Eben Upton, one of the founders of, designers of, uh, in fact, a critical part of the uh, Raspberry Pi $35 computer. Um, we're going to talk about availability, where you can get one, how well it's been selling, the shock that he must have uh, had when he saw the first orders flooding in. Pretty darn exciting stuff. Uh, We'll have more in just a moment. But before we go on, I do want to thank one of our sponsors. Makes a lot of our shows uh, possible. And I hear from a lot of our viewers and listeners uh, that they are really thrilled with Stamps.com. Stamps lets you print your own U.S. postage. Doesn't work in England. U.S. postage via your computer and your printer. You do not need special links. You do not need a postage meter. You've already got what it takes. All you need is Stamps.com. And you'll never go to the post office again. You print the postage you need. They even provide a USB scale, so you never pay more than a penny more than what you need. Uh, you, they uh, they will pick it up. Post office will pick it up for you. You can even schedule free pickups from the mail carrier that come to get your package. And there's no limit on the size of the package. This is kind of nice. Normally, if it's 13 ounces or more, you have to hand carry it to the post office so they can look you in the eye. Post 9/11 stuff. Not with Stamps.com. The Stamps.com and Disia system means they know who you are. It's cool. They will pick it up and they will take it on its way. So literally, the everything you could do at the post office, you could do at your desk. I mean, even things like international postage, you know, which is always a pain. 
Stamps.com fills out the forms for you, prints everything out, ready to go. You don't have to go to the post office. If you're an Amazon or an eBay seller, you'll love how it's integrated into the software. So even the seller's name and address is printed out for you automatically. No copy and paste, nothing. It just does it. Stamps.com is a fantastic boon for anybody who does a lot of mailing, a lot of shipping. It'll print right on the envelope, which makes it look super professional. In fact, if you use QuickBooks, as we do here, Stamps.com will take the QuickBooks address book, do your invoicing, your billing, your uh, accounts receivable, print it right on the envelope with your company logo. It, it looks so slick and professional. Have I sold you yet? Why don't you try it? No risk trial for 30 days when you visit Stamps.com. Click the uh, microphone in the upper right-hand corner and use the offer code TRIANGULATION to get our special offer. It's a $110 value, $55 in postage coupons. That's, that's, a, that's a good deal. That's like two Raspberry Pis. Free digital scale. You only pay shipping and handling for that, $5. Then you get a $5 supply kit to make up for it. And a four-week trial, all at Stamps.com. Do use the offer code TRIANGULATION so that we get credit and so that you get a better deal, frankly, an extra $30 in, uh, in free postage. Stamps.com. It is a revelation. Once you start, you start using it, you'll never understand why you waited so long. We're having a little technical difficulty, Eben. You never heard of that before. No, no, we, we, everything's been smooth sailing. Uh, we didn't have any issues with, with FCC certification or with people soldering down the wrong, uh, the wrong uh, um, Ethernet jacks or any of that. That never happened. Um, so uh, it's been very smooth sailing. Of course. Nothing ever goes wrong in technology. <laughs> yeah. so, I, I just, it's such a great story. Did you have any idea with the kind of reception you were going to get? I mean, it sounds like, you know, you, were a ho- you thought maybe this is a hobbyist project. We might sell a few hundred, a few thousand of them at mm-hmm. best. Yeah, so we 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 uh, we try to solve this really parochial little problem, right? We're trying to solve, we were trying to solve this problem that Cambridge had, which you know, Cambridge needs to find a hundred bright kids a year to read computer science, uh, and that's the kind of scale that we were thinking about until last year, um, and then then we we had a bit of an explosion of interest, um, and sort of around about Christmas time, we found ourselves staring down the barrel of. <laughs> What we came to realize was going to be a hundred thousand. You know, okay, we thought at the time tens of thousands of units of demand, and um, yeah, we uh, uh, we were looking into printing stamps um, uh, 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 ourselves, uh, which was which is, uh, <laughs> is a, it's a much more primitive um, experience in the United Kingdom than, than uh, sometimes in the United States. Yeah, really. Uh, the Royal Mail, uh, yeah. So you're fantastic. doing this yourself. You're not. Uh, you're doing all the fulfillment and everything. You don't have some Chinese company stamping them out. Well. Well, that's the thing. That was the plan. The plan was to do the fulfillment ourselves. When we thought we were going to do a few hundred, we thought, yeah, we'll do the fulfillment Easy. ourselves. You know, and uh, right. uh, yeah, absolutely, what could possibly go wrong? And then you find yourself, you find yourself staring down the barrel of of, of tens and tens of thousands of units of, of, of volume, and that's got two problems. One, you need a lot of capital to buy right. all the chips you need to build those bots. Right. Um, and two, you find you're going to be stuffing envelopes until while well, stuffing boxes until until the cows come home so um so we're very lucky that we got these two companies i mentioned um uh, allied and uh, um, allied in newark um who agreed to sign up to pre- uh, to produce them for us to to commission the manufacturer in china to provide the capital to commission the manufacturer to do all of the distribution and handle all the customer support so from day one you know and we're very lucky because uh, in the end on day one day one was the 29th of february we sold 100,000 units what uh yeah, it's just completely incredible. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> we, there are 200,000 of these things in the wild today, right? So to, it, actually, we sold 100,000, but then it took a couple of months to make those 100,000 and get them out of the door. So we then caught up uh, with that. And there are now 200,000. We think they're going to be half a million by the end of September. We think they're going to be a million by the end of the year. Yeah, that's a lot of, that's a lot of little computers. Um, that's, you know, it's I had no obviously. idea. I knew it was successful. I didn't realize. Yeah. Yeah, there you are. You see, so I had a meeting yesterday with 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 with, with somebody who was who we were talking about about some scaling up, uh, yeah, options. And he, yeah, he said, so you guys are on like ten thousand of these, you know. So we're talking about helping you get from ten to fifty thousand. I'm like, okay, you're off by a factor of twenty. You know, we do want to get five times bigger, but we want to get five. <laughs> we want to get five times bigger from two hundred thousand, not five times bigger from from ten thousand. Um, so yeah, it's been. We, so we're very lucky, you know. We wouldn't. Be, we, there's no way. On, on Earth, that we we could produce a hundred thousand uh, units even in a year, let alone in a month or two. So um, where, where are they made? Uh, what's going on now? So they're made in they they're made and always have been made in southern China. They're made okay. they're made like a lot of things in, in Shenzhen. Shenzhen and- 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, there, so it's actually a contract manufacturer. We identified when we were intending to build them ourselves. And um, they, they're, they're fantastic. They, they, they build, I think, um, the MP3, their main line of business, they make MP3 players for the American market. Um, and, yeah, they've, they've been building these, and they started off building a very small number of them for us, and all of a sudden they're building this very large number of units, which is, which is obviously great. Um, and so, yeah, they're built there. They're then imported into uh, into Europe and into North America by these two companies, and then they then are then distributed from their warehousing system um, to uh, to. So, I think from day one we've had presence. We've had presence in sort of about thirty one countries. I think in the first month, probably gone up to fifty something. Wow! So you can buy almost everywhere. You clearly have a tiger by the tail here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly the that's exactly actually exactly the the, the the terminology people use, uh, and it, there's there's this awful kind of success disaster kind of this awful realization when you realize that you accidentally, well, as we did at the end of last year, you've accidentally promised a hundred thousand people you're going to build them a twenty five dollar computer. That's an awful. That's actually an awful situation to be in, right? Because um, you need to buy parts for all, as you said. You yes, and you, I mean you, you can work it out. A hundred thousand units, twenty five dollar right. computer. Two and a half million dollars. I don't have two and a half million dollars. Um, so uh, you so you you find yourself in a situation that it's very hard. It could be very hard to get out of. So we we extremely lucky to have to to have attracted the attention of these two partners. That's fantastic. And is there a profit in there? I mean, or is this basically the cost of the thing? Yeah, there's a profit in there. It's a reasonably it's a reasonably profitable business. So you could uh, bootstrap up to bigger and bigger production because you are taking some money in that you get. Well, the nice thing, of course, is these partners are they are kind of they're multi billion. Do- they're right. multi billion dollar companies, right? So they 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 have been able to provide us with access to capital uh, that otherwise we would have. Our original capital was done was was provided by people like me, not not updating the kitchens and our houses. You know, Liz, Liz has to play, spend a lot of time playing these computer games because <laughs> she has we have no a kitchen. kitchen. <laughs> yeah, we have a kitchen you can barely cook in. She has a hot plate. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, it's, you know, a microwave, you know, yeah. a, we've got a box outside. Um, so, um, so, so that's where the, you, that's enough capital. You can scrape together enough capital there to make 10,000 units because that's only a quarter of a million dollars. So if there's a number of you doing it and you're all prepared to stick your necks out, you can get to a quarter of a million dollars. Much more than that is not um, right. Uh, much more than that is not uh, is not uh, really sorry. So I'm on Newark dot com right now, and they. Did, by mm-hmm. the way, uh, there, is, did anybody end up buying the Model A, or is everybody buying the Model B with the? Uh, so the the Model. So the interesting thing, the Model A has not in fact launched. Um, we we kind of felt we had attention enough attention to do one of them well. Right. So we've launched the model. Um, we launched the Model B. Uh, I gave an interview a couple of weeks ago in which I showed a, a prototype Model A. So there are now some tens of Model A prototypes in the world. We know they work. We know we can build them. And I think the hope in the next couple of months is to bring those, is to is to think about bringing those to the market. Um, but, yeah, we just wanted to satisfy people with Model Bs, given we think maybe 80 or 90% of people are going to want Model Bs. That seemed like the one to build. That seems to be the case for 10 bucks more. But I'm on Newark.com and uh, availability zero – uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, let me have a look. Yeah, Newark.com, Raspberry Pi. Yeah. So, so um, the I believe the current the current lead time is about. Um, uh, we're not quite finished burning down that initial spike of demand. So um, we are. Um, I believe their lead time is about five weeks. I'm um, looking. On so, the other hand, you could go to eBay and spend a hundred sixty dollars. For a Model B new in box tested, so yeah, and I, I think that's quite aggressive by that seller because <laughs> uh, my 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 experience is generally these days if you want one of these urgently you can get one for sixty or seventy bucks. Okay, um, if you shop around a little bit. So the nice thing is these things are already even if you pay the premium to get them today on eBay, they're already cheaper than virtually any other piece of. Computing Absolutely. Hardware. So, Absolutely. so even our even our even our price gouging price is is, is, is <laughs> slow. <laughs> yeah, here's one fifty seven. Uh, the current bid is fifty seven eighty seven. Although there are already twenty seven bids and still two days to go. Um, yeah, so, so, this, and you, you said that one. That one there is actually from our other. Uh, that one there, by the look of the box, is from our other distributor. So that's okay. that I believe is an allied one. Okay. Um, that's great. I mean, that's a you know this is. Uh, this is what you hoped for, and and now what you, I guess what's surprising is 
that there are so many hobbyists out there because you get the Raspberry mm. Pi. It's not a, you know, you don't plug it in and start watching D- Blu-ray DVDs on your TV set. It takes a little effort here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's really, it's enormously heartening that um, across the whole, across all age ranges, obviously there's a lot of people like me, you know, you're, you're nostalgic. Right. Geek. Um, so, so there's, there's a lot of us. Um, but there are there are also um, an enormous number of young people. We we uh, my wife put out a call for people to send in pictures of their um, uh, of, of their children using, it. and she'd expect to see teenagers. And what she actually got was toddlers. Um, wow! And, and she she got an amazing slate of toddlers <laughs> playing with Raspberry Pis, you know, playing and sometimes programming with Raspberry Pis. So there's an enormous across the age, across the age range. There's an enormous amount of interest in this. I, I'm just so th- so thrilled that it has been such a success. And we're going to take another break. But when we come back, I want to talk to about what people are doing. You've already shipped quite a few, and I know you're going to ship many more. Uh, this is, I mean, in many ways, the most successful computer launch in years. <laughs> and, and it's not just the price. I really do agree. There's a certain nostalgia and a certain interest. And I think there's a lot of adult geeks who are giving it for their kids because they want mm. them to learn this stuff. And I think that's great. So we'll talk when we come back. Uh, Eben Upton is our guest founder and trustee at raspberrypi.org. You, there are places you can buy them on the net uh, if you're willing to wait a few weeks. Um, one, of course, is uh, Newark. The other is Allied. But if you search for Raspberry Pi, uh, you'll find, uh, find sites on site. And, of course, if you're really in a hurry, you can go to eBay. There's a couple of people. Not very many. I think most of the people who bought them wanted them. They're not, they're not anxious to sell them. Uh, Before we go too much further, though, I do want to mention audible.com, a great place if you, you know, you're sitting there, you're soldering, you're tinkering, you're maybe you're exercising, walking the dog, doing the dishes, maybe you're uh, driving to work or back. There's always time when you can't hold a book, but you, but your mind is available to read. And I think reading is such a wonderful thing. And I was so glad when I found audible.com, I had a long commute, a couple of hours a day, at least if there were no traffic. Uh, going to Tech TV uh, 10, 12 years ago. And uh, when I found Audible, I was so happy. Instant downloads. You know, before you get in the car, you browse around an Audible. You pick a book out of the 100,000 titles. You buy it. And, uh, you, in fact, you can just get in the car without downloading it because the Audible app on Windows, iPhone, and Android phone will list all of your current purchases, every book you've ever bought, and then just download it uh, to uh, your device, even as you're driving. Uh, and that's fantastic. So you're never without great stuff to read. Uh, I have a subscription plan. I recommend a subscription plan because that way uh, you pay a flat rate. You get a book uh, a month. Or they even have larger subscription plans if you want. And there's so many great things uh, to choose from. This is, In fact, the real challenge is going to audible.com. It's like browsing the best bookstore you've ever been to is picking a book. But do that because I'm going to show you how you can get your first book free. If you visit audiblepodcast.com slash triangulation, you'll sign up there for the gold account. That's the book a month subscription. But your first month is free. Your first credit is free. You can use it as you wish. You can cancel it any time, and that book will be yours forever. This is kind of interesting. Uh, Alan Cumming performs Macbeth. They have dramatizations. Um, there's, some, there's some really great stuff in here. Uh, fiction, nonfiction, fiction um, I, I listen to a lot of history, but there's also science fiction. There's also uh, technology and science. Great way to learn uh, a little bit about science. I just ordered Richard Dawkins' uh, newest book, uh, How We Know What We Know. In the Mood for Food, What Einstein Told His Cook. <laughs> I like that. Who's in Charge? Free Will and the Science of the Brain. Ray Kurzweil's latest, The Singularity is Near, When Humans Transcend Biology. This is the kind of stuff you listen to, you get so excited, you drive around the block three or four more times because you don't want to get home and stop listening. You will love it on your iPhone, your iPad, your Android phone, your Windows phone, your divest, your, your desktop devices, your laptops, anywhere, pretty much, you can listen to Audible, and you will love it. Audiblepodcast.com slash triangulation. That's where to go to try it free right now. And I know you've heard me for years talking about Audible. Don't delay do it right now. You're going to love it. We're talking with Eben Upton, one of the founders of Raspberry Pi. You said six years in the making, Eben? 
Indeed, yeah. So it's been a, it's been kind of a long road, and then a very sharp, yeah, um, uptick kind of, at the end of the road. You overnight know? success. Hockey stick. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I remember when people, and this was probably seven months ago, first started saying, "Leo, have you heard about the Raspberry Pi? We got to get one. This is so exciting!" And they've been begging to get you on the show for months. So we're, I'm thrilled that you can be here. And I suspect that many of these people still don't even have one. So, um, although there are few do, I see a few people in our chat room who. Uh, who so, so we, are, so we, are, I, I, why don't I make an announcement uh, for people on the West Coast? Um, we are going to be. There's a thing called DefCon um, that I'm sure many oh, of yes. you have heard of, right? We're going to be at DefCon next week. Awesome. Um, we're going to be at DefCon with Raspberry Pis to sell. So um, we've not done a um, uh, we've we've not done a show before. These things have been these things have been rare enough that that we haven't been able to turn up with big boxes of these somewhere and try and sell them. So, d- for a bit of fun, you know, my wife and I we very much like Vegas. Uh, we're going to turn up at the Rio, and we are going to we're going to sell some raspberry pies, and we will see we will see how that goes. So those people people on the west coast who yeah, there you are there you are Defcon people who uh, people fancy a little trip out to uh, people who fancy a little trip out into the desert, uh, you might be able to get your hands on a raspberry pie. That is awesome. How many are you bringing? Uh, a few thousand. That's fantastic there news. There you are. We're building four thousand raspberry pies a day, so we're going to bring you know we'll bring a day's we'll bring a day's build and we'll see how it goes. Four thousand a day. Yeah. It's yeah. mind boggling. All right, so what? It's amazing. Is, so 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 you get the raspberry pie if you order it from Newark uh, or what was the other one? Allied. Allied. Yeah. Allied. You'll get. You can order, and you probably should, unless you really know what you're doing. An SD card that has a mm-hmm. bootable Linux operating system on it. You hook it up to a television. Is that what you're going to hook it up to? Yeah. So you, you you use a if you use an HDMI cable or an RCA cable, depending on whether you've got a kind of the idea of allowing people to use an RCA uh, 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 connector is the old analog televisions. Are free. I don't know what it's like in the US. I guess it's they're like in the cheap. UK they're free. They're free. Yes. They're free. You, know, you, you have to pay someone to take. If you've got one, you've got to right. pay someone to take it away. That's right. So, so if you're a kid, you can go down the street, and knock on people's doors, and say, "Look, I'll take. It. If you've got an old television, I'll take it away for you. You don't have to pay the government to take take it off your hands." You need so, a, you need so, a power supply too. It, it, yeah. You have to. You, yeah. What do you can you order one of those typically? You, you can order all of these. So, so okay. all both partners will will sell you everything. Um, uh, but kind of our idea is there's no point in making a thirty five dollar computer if you need to buy a hundred dollars of stuff to go right. With, right. So so all the things that you that you need are supposed to be things. Ah, here you go. Here are some accessories. There's so all cases, the things, cables, all of that stuff. Yeah. All the things you need are supposed to be. Um, uh, all the things you need are, are supposed to be um, things you already have. Right. So the power supply is a mobile phone supply. Okay. Um, the um, the it's, a, uh, it's micro uh, USB the interface. Yeah, it's just a, a regular micro USB. So you know, if you've got a Kindle charger or an everybody iPod, has that. Yeah. Awesome product, what's the wa- what's the required wattage? Uh, so you need to you need to have a bond that will support about eight hundred milliamps. So that's oh. about four watts. Nothing. Um, which is which is nothing. I mean, that's the, the certainly in the EU. That's actually the standard is eight hundred and fifty milliwatts. Is the all mobile phone chargers have to provide eight hundred and fifty milliwatts. We kind of scoped ourselves uh, to, to stay in. But and the, the and, lovely, and the don't lovely buy a plastic box. Get an Altoid tin or something and make it fun. Well, the, the, that's the lovely thing. We were going to make a case, and the reason we, the reason we didn't make a case originally was if you're going to build ten a thousand, say, or something, then um, you know the cost of the injection molding is kind of expensive. So we figured, well, we'll wait until people can use Altoid tins until we're at volume. <laughs> um, the lovely, lovely thing is that by um, uh, by not uh, having our own case, by not having an official case, what we've done is we've created this little, little ecosystem of of people who are. Um, uh, who make cases, and there are all sorts of people making three D printed cases. There's a lovely one called uh, There's a lovely one called Pibo, P I B O W, like like rainbow Pibo, um, uh, and um, that is uh, it's actually that's made of a series of a stack of laser cut uh, bits of acrylic in all the colours of a rainbow. And um, this thing is just the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And we would never have thought of doing that ourselves. And yet this guy, in fact, Paul Beach. In fact, this is this uh, Pi- Pibo is a is a uh, is is a Paul Beach LA? Right? You 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 found it? I, I think it's Pibo. Yeah. Um, yeah. This, so this is Paul Beach. He's our um, he, he's our, the guy who did our logo. And uh, I met him at a, I, I met him um, after not having seen him for a few months. I met him at a conference a couple of days ago, and he said, "Oh, look at this in my in my bag." He got this thing out of his bag, and I was like, "That is the most amazing thing." And there was this little girl walking past. Um, uh, she kind of must have been seven. 
and she and she, her head just like snapped around, and she's <laughs> like, "What the hell is that? What do you? What, well, probably not. What the hell is that? But you know, what is that? Um, I must have that. You know, is that a case for a raspberry pi? I must have it. Uh, so, so uh, there you are. That's you know, I mean, so that just, cute. We we would never have uh, we would never have thought right. of uh, have thought of that. So so the, that's the sort of thing that by not kind of constraining the community too much by leaving a lot of it to the community, right. we've ended up with these things that we could never have. You've got an ecosystem. Done. So yeah, tell me about some true. of the things. Uh, so you got a power supply. You hook it up to a monitor. Uh, you got USB charger, uh, Ethernet. What are the what? I mean, are people using it as just a traditional computer? There are some people using it as a traditional computer, and I think that the as we've released newer versions of the operating system, there was a big release yesterday. As we've released newer versions of the operating system, it's become much more usable as a general purpose computer. The web browsing performance has got much better. Um, the the desktop performance has got better. Uh-huh. So that's so that's one use, and so people do that, and they also use it as a media center. So we run a thing called Xbox Media Center. Oh, how funny! You put XBMC is- on it. We put XB, We have an extremely good XBMC port, and so we have a lot of people using it too. And which will let you you can watch YouTube and you can watch all all those things. So so you get a lot of people using it for that. That's what you know. What I bet you you're selling multiple copies of Raspberry Pi to people. Mm, yeah, well, you know, people want one for home automation, one yeah. for media center. You know, because uh, a lot of people ordered from both distributors, so a lot of people did end up with two because they ordered from both. Just in, in case, order they, right? Right. Yeah, just in case you know, see which one, see which one got got in first. Um, so people are doing, and those are the kind of softwarey kind of things. But the nice thing is we have this expansion connector, which is kind of like what you'd see on, a, on an Arduino. So it has general purpose I/O, and so people are using it to do control. It's a, um, it's a GPIO, twenty six pin expansion mm-hmm. slot, basically. Yes, so it's 0.1 inch pin strip, so it's the simplest possible connector. You know, you can just plug wires onto the top of that. Uh, and so we've seen people do amazing stuff. We saw somebody, we hold the Raspberry Pi, holds the record for the highest altitude um, pictures ever sent down from an amateur vehicle. As of about two or three days ago, some people put a balloon up to 40 kilometers, so, so, so two-fifths of the way to space. To the edge of space. These pictures um, are on the uh, Raspberry site, uh, RaspberryPi.org site. You can see. Yeah, these uh, here we go. Amazing so this pictures. Is, this is called Pine. This is called Pine in the Sky, obviously. Uh, <laughs> and, and the lovely thing about these pictures is people have sent balloons up before, and they've taken pictures when they're up there and brought them come down and retrieved them. But these ones were actually sent down via radio from the. Wow. Uh, so it's filling their weather balloon. These were sent down by radio from the Pi while it was at altitude. And that's apparently a record. So, so this is a, this is the sort of thing people get up to when you're uh, when when you if you give two hundred thousand people very very cheap computer hardware, that's the sort of thing people do with it. Every school in the world should have ten of these, and they should have this should be part of the curriculum. This is so cool, and what a great way to get a kid excited about science, about technology. I mean, this was your goal. You've achieved it. Well done. Yeah. Yeah, well, this is the thing about the balloons thing is amazing because every high school, right, can do that. That's yes. cheap. That is very, very, very cheap. And I don't know what schools are like in the U.S., but in the U.K., schools don't have a lot of money. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the sort of thing that, that your average public school can do out of its science budget. And it can, you know, kids can build a, a product and send it to the edge of space. Uh, and that's that's exactly what we want. We're not just about make, trying to make people be computer programmers. We want to make people be scientists and mathematicians. Yes. And this is the sort of thing that makes people excited about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Dave Ackerman, who did the, the balloon, uh, has a great blog, DaveAckerman.com, where he just tells you everything you need to know. So the curriculum is yeah. done. You just The hardest thing is getting a, a GD Raspberry Pi. <laughs> <laughs> but they're cranking them out as fast as they can. You must be. We believe you know, we're very close to them being. We are really very close to them being available tomorrow. You know, to them being available the that, day. That know, always happens, right? That's what happens with yeah, something that's in actually. hot demand. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, so you think in the next in the months, uh, weeks, or months to come that it'll be something you could just get online, order, and have it the next day? Yeah, I I, I believe that that is. Closer than closer than you'd think. Actually, uh, I think I think that that really is coming, and then that that'll be when the floodgates open. At the moment, you've got to be the people who are getting them at the moment are people who were dedicated enough to order these things when there were lead times of you know twelve weeks. Right. Uh, if you if you go look on uh, on some of the pop, on some of the partners' websites, you'll see lead times now down in five to six weeks. Um, very shortly, it'll be less than that. So so th- that's the point where everyone 
everyone who has the the vaguest inclination to have a play with one will be able to get that. Are people on. putting Android and other operating systems on these? Um, we so uh, I, I actually have a I should do a blog post about this. I, I've seen some uh, I've seen some Android activity uh, mm -hmm. around around this device. Um, it, what's kind of unusual is there are a number of other people trying to do things in this area um, that are based on uh, APs, typically Chinese um, um, application processor platforms. And the funny thing about those is they only run Android because they're basically tablet. They're basically designed for tablets. Right. So you have these you know, a lot of a lot of other devices, sort of two or three times the price maybe, but. But they're trying to do a, maybe a vaguely similar thing, and and they only run Android. We we, you know, we only run Debian, or well, we run a number of other Linux distros, but we don't yet run Android. Right. I'd love to see. I I would really love to see it running Ice Cream Sandwich. I think that would be fantastic. Yeah, wouldn't that um, be cool? Yeah. And you know, Windows is being ported to ARM. There's no reason why Windows 8 couldn't run on one of these things as well. You've got a good GPU. Mm -hmm. So so I think I think that that would be a. There is a little, there is a little hiccup, which is the, the we use an ARM v6 processor ah. versus six processor. Uh, I think the implication is the Windows RT requires an ARM v7 processor. Got it. Okay. Um, but apart from that, yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, we we have the kind of level of uh, level of capability that you that you'd need to run something like that. It's so cool. There are many many online sites now, and will be more and more, of course, where people are hacking, playing with, putting together projects for. Um, here's a rpiforum.net, a forum for Raspberry Pi mods, hacks, and ideas. This is great, mm -hmm. a VentureBeat article on different cases. I think you were inspired not to provide the case. You gave people, look, here's a Marlboro pack, a Lego yeah, box. <laughs> So I should I should really I should really not be coming on here telling people that that white one that you've just scrolled past is extremely nice. The 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 the, the, the this this one is very nice. The yeah. the uh, um. That's that one's by fun. Marco the, the one, Alici. Yeah, so 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 he sent me one of those, and I absolutely love it. That's that's the one that I that's uh, while I wait for my Pibo, um, that is the one that I'm that's the one I'm using. Um, the one two down from that, the red one two down from that, um, that is interestingly doesn't exist. That was a that's actually Photoshop. <laughs> um, that's that's a that's a that's a that's from out of Wired. Yeah. Um, and they, we showed them. We actually, they came and did a photo shoot, and when we didn't have any cases, and uh, they, they took, they took a picture of a bare board, and that, so that case is actually, um, I believe, uh, <laughs> um, pure Photoshop. But, well, you know uh, what's interesting about Marcos is he did it in software Blender and uh, Yafare, and then hmm. he's using Shapeways to three D print it, and so yeah. this is really combining the whole maker space, all the different make technologies like three D printing to make the cases. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I just uh, look at this. <laughs> uh, ben Heck, of course, uh, took a yeah, raspberry he, from a Maker Fair and built this one. That's very funny. It was a blast. We were at Maker Fair in the Bay Area in uh, in May as as guests of Newark, and um, I, uh, we got to meet Ben. Uh, I'm, he's a, he's I'm, a great. I'm sorry that I, I I didn't have you in then. But I'm so glad we could have you on now. And I cannot thank you enough for just completely jump-starting this whole movement. You were right. We needed this. And the, and the testament to that is that you have sold hundreds of thousands. And uh, who knows how many uh, you're going to sell by uh, the end of year one. It's, it's really exciting. Oh, fingers, fingers crossed. He's, yeah. hoping for seven. He's hoping for seven figures. Do you have a uh, follow-up? Do we have a follow-up? We do not have a follow-up. Um, I mean, if we had a follow-up, I wouldn't tell you about the follow-up, right? But um, Oh, you uh, could. We, now, just, come on. People are going to buy this. Just between you and me. Uh, no, we, so we're very careful. So they, I'm, I know you know, you must know about the Osborne Computer Osborne, Company. You don't right? want to Osborne uh, yourself. I understand. Yeah, we're not going to Osborne ourselves. Yeah. So, you know, if I, if I did have one, I wouldn't tell you about it. As it is, I don't have one. Uh, <laughs> so you're honest, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, 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 but you know, it's, it's. I think the thing is that um, there's a lot of performance gains still available in this platform and software. Yes. We started off, we started off not particularly usable as a desktop computer. We're now pretty usable as a desktop computer. We want to be exceptionally usable as a desktop desktop computer, just on the basis of software. And I think that we, I think we can get there. I think we can get to a very usable state. Um, so that's um, uh, that, that's the uh, the priorities about software, and then the other priorities, of course, going back to education. You know, our uh, you know the, our foundation, our charitable foundation. Its mission is not to build cheap computers. Its mission is to get kids using computers. Right. And and 
the cheap computer is a, is a means to an end. And, and so I think it's very important for us to get back and kind of my role. So I, I serve as the, the executive director of the foundation. Um, and my my goal, over my kind of responsibility over the next year is to kind of pull us back a little bit to focusing on that and make sure that we, we deliver a platform that kids can really use. Kids who don't have geek parents, you know, I think kids who have geek parents, this is a great platform for them already. Kids who are in a computer, computing phobic environment, you know, we need to provide them with a, a more polished, a smoother and more polished user experience before they can use this to learn. Well, and that's nice because there's a whole ecosystem of third parties now who are jumping in and not just the cases but uh, in every way to make it easier to use and to do different things with it and, uh, and that's a sign that you've built something really great is when you get all these people saying yeah we want to we want to ride the raspberry pi train here's here's the pet rock blog this guy's used the gpio interface to connect an snes controller to the oh, just... <laughs> he's booting up the raspberry pi uh as an nes this is this. I just thought this. I just thought this was beautiful. Uh, I just I I want to play Super Mario Kart on my. I I, I don't know. I, I thought that the the little adapter board he built looked a little intimidating to uh, uh, looked a little intimidating to build. But you know, this thing seems to run SNES games incredibly well. Who knew? You know. Yep. Well, you um, had the capability. That's uh, that's just yeah. amazing. Well, thank you, Eben. Such a pleasure meeting you, and I am so grateful uh, that you put that six years of work in. Thanks to Broadcom. Uh, for supporting mm-hmm. you and uh, and helping that happen, and allied in Newark for making the manufacture possible, and the really avid, uh, involved community that you've built up around Raspberry Pi in just a few months. Yeah, it's incredible. So I hope to see some. I hope to see some West Coast Raspberry Pi fans uh, at DEF CON. Uh, and next fr- Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at DEF CON. DC20. And uh, uh, Wired wants to know from the chat room, uh, what's it? is there an ETA for the camera module you were talking about? Uh, there is. So um, we have um, – the reason I talked about it at the weekend was that we, we now have pricing for, for, for a 5-megapixel sensor that we're comfortable with. Um, we have a PCB design we're comfortable with, which is currently going through manufacture. So I'm hoping, let's say – Let's say three months. Let's be conservative and say three months. All right. Uh, I think. I think this is you know for guys like Pie in the Sky, this is going to be this is going to be heaven. You know? Oh no, kidding! And we're going to get. I, I'm going to send somebody to DefCon just to get just to get a Raspberry <laughs> Pi because I want to do a show. We have a show called Know How. I think I as I want to put a Raspberry Pi in I as his hands, and we'll see what we can uh, what fun things we can put together. I think that's part of what makes this interesting. Get the community together. Uh, and and start showing the kinds of things you could do. That inspires a kid to go, oh, I want to do that. Gives them some ideas, and that's what this is all about. Thank you, Eben. What a great project. Thanks so much. Thank you. Eben Upton, founder, uh, one of the founders and creator of the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi, just like the irrational number or whatever it is. Uh, is it irrational? It's rational. It's just repeating. Uh, raspberrypi.org for more information. But, you know, if you Google Raspberry Pi, as I have done, it's the variety and the, and the, and the volume of interesting stuff people are done. With, with this, and it's just beginning, is, uh, is mind-boggling. It's really, really exciting. Thank you, Eben. Thank you. Take care. Good night. I know it's late. Cheers. Cheers. Take care. Bye. Padre SJ, are you going to uh, DEF CON? Not Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi. We're going to get Pad- Padre SJ to uh, pick up one for us, will you? I want one. I want one. He's going to want one for himself. We can share. We can share. Hey, I'll pay you uh, to, to pick it up. I'll buy it. And I, now, now how much would you pay? Raspberry Pi. Very cool stuff. Thank you for joining us. We do triangulation every week. And I got to tell you, if you missed an episode, go back. Because there are so many... Inter- Last week's with uh, Nolan Bushnell was amazing. This week's with Eben Upton. We've got 61 episodes. And if you want to join us and watch live, you can. We do it every Wednesday now. Our new time, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, that's 2200 UTC. Live is fun because there's stuff before and after that we don't include in the uh, download. But we do make an on-demand of the, you know, the real interview uh, available on our website twit.tv slash TRI and everywhere podcasts are available. I don't call them podcasts. They do. I consider it an on-demand version. How about that? 
Thanks for joining us and uh, come back next week. We'll see you again on Triangulation. <laughs>